Hi friend, it's Hunter from Interactive and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create this metallic effect inside of a blender for your product visualizations and this is specifically for a wine bottle. This is really handy and it's a really nice effect that we can create inside of blender and so it looks really complicated here some of this is probably to be ignored as i'm not using it it's part of the experimentation however it's all coming from this one texture here which i've labeled met for metallic but this texture is also driving a couple of other things if you're interested in product visualization, our Blender course is the perfect place to start. Learn how to create impressive product CGI that looks professional and realistic. With lifetime access to updates and new courses, you'll have endless opportunities to grow and refine your skills. Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming a pro in product visualization. So first of all, it starts off in Adobe Photoshop. So if I jump over there, this is our design. And it's been pulled apart now if you want to download this i've got it down in the link below you can go ahead and download all this and you can follow along if you would like but essentially it's a little bit messy in here we have to create a layer for our color here so that's our color layer and we also have to create a layer for our metallic so the layer for our metallic is just basically a mask that tells blender Hey, I want this layer to be metallic. Now you probably notice that I have got this around the incorrect way, but because I am using this for other things inside Blender, so I'm using it for my roughness, I'm using it for to mask it out on my paper texture, it doesn't really matter which way it is because I'm going to have to invert it anyway. But basically, if a value is zero, it means that it will be set to zero in here. So I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit about how metallic works. So I just want to show you an example of a metallic sort of texture here before we jump in and do this inside of Blender. And so basically the easiest way to do metallic is reduce the roughness because roughness will disperse the light in all sorts of different, different directions and tell Blender that this material is rough. So when we increase roughness, the light is absorbed more. And when we decrease it down, the light is not as much absorbed and it sort of bounces off and becomes reflective. And so then when we introduce metallic into this, it introduces a metal like material. So this is a little bit hard to see in this case, but let's have a look in material view. So we usually have metallic either on or off. And so when it's a value of one, um, this also correlates to the object being white. So we can create a value of one by plugging in, let's say we go a noise texture, shift a noise here and shift a, and we do a color ramp. This is just to control the noise like this. We'll plug the factor of the noise into the factor of the color ramp and plug the color into our metallic. And if we have a look at it, we probably won't see much happening yet, but with Node Wrangler, which is a plugin, which if you go to edit and then preferences, you can just search Node Wrangler. What we can do is control shift click the color ramp and this will come up and we can just crunch the black value down like this, crunch the white like this. So we don't get much color in between the two values. I'm also going to go over to a noise texture and click control T. That'll just put a mapping node onto it and a texture coordinate I've generated. So now if I control shift click this here, what you can see is that the areas that 
Let's have a look at this. The areas that are white, that means we have full metallic. The areas that are black means we don't have metallic. And so anything that's black is a value of zero. Anything that's white is a value of one. And so that basically works here as well with roughness. We could plug this into here. But basically what's going to happen here is it will conflict against each other. Because if we have metallic full and roughness full here as white as a value of one, then they're going to interact with each other. So what we can do is reverse one of them. So I can go shift A and go invert. Plug the color into the color and the color into the roughness. Shift click the principled and then we get an effect like this. Now this is really cool because we can also uh, control the color still like this and we got a fair bit of control over this when we create it and so we're already getting the sort of metallic effect here obviously the lighting isn't that appealing with this shader ball but this helps us in setting up our other scene so now if we have a look at this what this can do is control it and we can use this as a mask to say Hey, I want this metallic or hey, I don't want this metallic at all. And this will also work with our roughness. Now we can keep it a straight black and white mask here. And what I would do is just file, uh, save as a copy and you just pick the TIFF option here. You could also use PNG or JPEG if you would feel like it. So now we can jump over into Blender and it's opened up. And what we can do is you can drop in an image node here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, start rebuilding this. So I'm just going to get rid of this bit here, like so. And so basically all that's happening now is I've got my color, which is also in the Photoshop file here. The color ones down the base here. I turn that on, color folder. And this is what will show our colors in Blender. And in that color, I've got a gamma and it's just because by default, sometimes the textures can come in a little bit flat. So a gamma can help boost the color a little bit, bring back some of that color that you see over when you're working on your art in here. And that's plugged into the base color here, like so. Down here, I've got a paper texture which I've got another tutorial on how to set up paper textures. And then that paper texture goes into a mix node, which isn't currently being used at the moment. And what will happen is then it goes into a bump and I've just got my settings set up here in the bump, it goes into the height and then goes into the normal on the principal BSDF and that creates your nice paper texture here. All right, so now what we want to do here is bring in an image texture. We'll use the UV unmapping, unwrapping, sorry. And we'll open up our image. And what we can do here, once we've got it, we're going to grab the metallic. And so this is our metallic mask. We can use control shift to preview this. And so what will happen here is we can use this. So if I want this to be metallic, I only want the black areas to be metallic. Now black holds a value of zero, which means it's going to go zero metallic on the black areas. So first we have to invert this. So I'll go invert and drop the invert here. Now what will happen is it will flip that. So now the metallic areas will be the white. So if I plug this in to the metallic, then I shift, control shift click the principal. You can see here, we're starting to get our metallic effect. Now you won't see this 
on yet unless you turn the roughness down because roughness will affect how the metallic works so there you go so we're starting to get the metallic however we've got another two problems to fix the first issue is of course the roughness because the paper here wants to be a rougher texture than the metallic and the second issue is the paper texture being inside the metallic areas which wouldn't happen so let's fix this roughness one first so basically what you can do is take the color and plug it into the roughness and this will work straight out of the bat so basically right now if I control click this the black bits here will be a value of zero roughness the white will be a value of one roughness which one roughness is fairly high even for paper so sometimes I put in something like a color ramp in here and the white side I just change the color and bring it down to like a value of 0.9 or 0.8 so now I can plug the color into here then plug the color ramps color into the roughness and control shift click so it's not going to be as rough and you can adjust this of course just by bringing that value slider down and previewing it all right so the next thing i want to fix here is of course the bump map here and the best way to do this is control click the mix i'm going to go and bring in the factor and basically all this is telling uh, Blender to do is take this into account and what's going to happen is if I reduce the factor or put the factor at one, maybe let's go zero, maybe have a look at it. So if I put the factor at zero or at A here, and I could also change this to color and control shift click that all right so what's happening now is if this label is black in this areas and i plug it into the factor anything that's black will be turned into one of two of these slots and i can't remember which way it goes but if i continue plugging this into the height go across to here we can see which way it's working so basically what's happening is the black is turning into slot A, the white is slot B. And so then when we come across to our bump map, we can adjust this by, and this will adjust the height of our metallic. And if we push it up, like so, basically means that the metallic will be pressed in and so this slide, I can bring this slider just so it's sort of the same level as, because metallic won't be pressed in very far. Something like that. Control shift click the principled and you can see there that we've got our effect going. Now I did in my version of creating this add a little bit of roughness to the metallic so it's not just straight uh, metallic and that'll fix some um, issues that you have with with uh, straight reflections here um, of course you can just uh, alter the light so we scale this up a bit we look at this and of course you can continue messing around with that but ultimately we've got our metallic effect and I think that's looking fairly nice. Obviously you would continue messing around with some of these lights just to get it a little bit better. So it looks really nice when you get a render, but that's all part of the process. All right, let's give this one a render. Just going to pause that, hit render. and that's good to go all right i hope you enjoyed this tutorial of course you can check out the 
links in the description. There's some resources down there to help you out. There's also a course which you can join, which teaches you a bit more about how to actually create the textures, like actually layering multiple textures. And we do do a much more advanced uh, texture layering than this. You also get to learn how to do displacement maps. And there is planned a lot more content into product visualization, things like uh, smartphone renderings, how to model properly. Yeah, a lot more content will be coming and you get access to every update that happens on our website. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.